Welcome to this webinar, 30 Minute Meditations, Developing Your Emotional Strength, brought to you by SBK Healthcare. To find out more about our online forums, webinars, workshops, and podcasts, please do visit our website, www.sbk-healthcare.co.uk. Meditate in live time with Dr. Mike Scanlon, a mental health consultant at Mind Time Therapies, to learn how to promote helpful mindfulness and detach yourself from worrying and negative emotions. Calmness and composure, especially in difficult times. I think they are difficult times, and we've just come out of um, difficult times. And um, I suppose we are always calmness and composure, uh, especially in difficult times, is for me the definition of what we mean by equanimity. That when all around us is feeling a bit sort of swirly and a bit sort of out of control, maybe, and members of our tribe, because that's how I see the healthcare tribe. I'm sort of retired. I've um, um, thankfully got to that point in my career where I've taken my NHS pension and I still work as a clinician and um, I still teach and I still um, see people and work but to be honest I, I, I'm sort of feeling very close to being semi-retired at the moment which is quite a nice place to be and it's also allows me to be more in my observing self less right in the middle of it and as you move into your observing self when you've been in the nhs for as long as i have and you kind of step out and you look in there is something about there as my slide says there in the middleness are all of these wonderful good kind caring people and it does feel um a little bit overwhelming and a couple of the courses I teach on, the professional nurse advocate course particularly, um, is, is very much looking at how we support each other to look after each other. And for me, one of the things I really, really push and try and influence is if we can build our mindful attention and find ways to sit with this stuff and sometimes it's not about becoming um, 40 minute a day meditators. There's a really good evidence base that tells us that short meditations, just five, six minutes, can absolutely stimulate a mindful response, you know. So just stopping sometimes. And so although the meditations, the two I'm doing today, are a bit longer, the second one is one that you can do in literally two minutes. So I'll do a longer version for the second one, and then I'll talk you through how you apply it in a two minute version of it. Because I think we've got to really look after ourselves and we've got to find what I describe as the observing self, which is I think what mindfulness allows us to connect with so that we step out of the maelstrom of all that is occurring around us and within us and we move to a place of relative calm and we breathe and we peer in at ourselves and in that distance from ourselves and self and ourselves and thoughts and emotions and feelings we can become observers of what is and that's what I want us to try and do today. So our first meditation is a meditation on observing thoughts and emotions and physical feelings. So there's a very good body of knowledge now that tell us that your body posture matters um, when you're meditating. So if you're sort of, if the signal your body and your brain is getting because you're sort of slumped over a desk trying to meditate and you look defeated, your brain doesn't want to kind of engage with the meditative process. However, if you sit and you just try and look dignified, so I'm just imagining all of these people around the country now sitting in front 
imagining you're looking at a sort of um, face front mirror there. And if you were looking at yourself, would you smile and say, oh, yes, I look dignified because that's what we want. So let's just find that for a moment. And let's begin our first meditation. So I just ask you to take your attention outside of the room that you're working in and listen and get a feel or a sense of the temperature out there and listen to anything you might hear out there and be aware of any thoughts or emotions that get triggered by out there. And then gentle, escort your attention and just explore the room you're sitting in. The sounds you can hear in here. The temperature of the room that you're meditating in. The ambience, the light. And then gentle your attention in just that a little bit further and find you and the core of you and listen, listen, listen to your breath, listen to your body, listen to your heart, listen to your very being. This is you in this present moment, just sitting, relaxing, meditating. And when you're ready, just let go of that attention on the breath and the body. Allow them to recede into the background, or if you like, just rest in the wings. They'll be back. Present, but less featured. And let's invite in a new attention into the domain of thoughts and feelings and mood states. Let's bring them to center stage. And for a time now, I'm just going to ask you to attend to the thoughts, not as individual thoughts. Don't be carried away by them. Don't be attracted or dismayed even by the content or the emotional charge of the thoughts. Sit back as though you were sitting on the bank of a beautiful stream amongst lush, soft grass on a warm, balmy summer's day. And the thoughts are like leaves on a stream that are carried from upstream and they travel past your consciousness and you choose not to reach into the cold water and fetch them out and look at them and try and deal with them because they are just thoughts. And emotions come and they too are like leaves on this stream. And you could attend to the emotions and you could and I would love you to just let them go and so we become observers of thoughts and emotions and maybe even physical expressions just mitochondrial blips all it is just neurons firing and we just sit as a whole human being, safe, warm, just watching this stuff, recognizing them as just neurons firing, just mental events, thoughts, words, pictures, secretions of the thinking mind, because that's all they are. And we can attend to them 
and not now. Let's try that again. We can attend to them if we want to, and we choose not to. There's equanimity. And we see any and all of these thoughts or emotions as the eddies and currents within this stream rather than facts or things to change. We, irrespective of their urgency or the fact that they come back or whether they're pleasant or whether they're seductive, unpleasant or scary, we just let them go and we expand the metaphor of the stream seeing any and all of these evanescent thought events. Well, they're like leaves on a stream. They might be bubbles bubbling up from the bottom of a pot of boiling water and dissolving back into the formlessness from whence they came. And for now, this is just busy humans letting any and all mental events, emotions, thoughts, feelings come, stay a while and go. Just resting moment by moment breath by breath, in this present moment. Bringing any awareness to any of the tendencies of your mind to start doing what we do as humans without meaning to. And we're allowed to chuckle as we meditate. That's allowed and smile. Because we commentate, don't we? And let's just bring our attention to any commentary that's going on. And we want to take a position with this commentary, a bit like we would if we were turning the sound down on the television set. We just want to turn the sound down and just watch the endless stream of events watching how easily thoughts come and go, knowing that if we feed into this stuff, we will start a new process. So we don't. We sit and we watch. Just leaves. And let's see it now. The leaf drops in a seesaw fashion somewhere from a tree. And it begins to float on our stream of consciousness. And as it comes towards us, we watch it. And we choose just to let it go. And we allow all of this to be held in bare attention, in awareness, moment on breath by breath. And we all, from the NHS together, right now, let's just sit and rest in the awareness of these thoughts, these feelings, whatever their emotional charge just observing them and letting them go. To see them as weather patterns, as ripples and waves on the surface of a vast and deep ocean of the mind. Broadening that metaphor, ripples that come and go. And for the remainder, 
of this meditation, we just ask you to sit and rest in an awareness of the arising and the passing away of thoughts and emotions because they do just come and they go. And as we sit and allow, we are finding equanimity. We are finding calm and composure. And we need more calm and more composure in our lives. And we sit and we allow and we smile. Well done, everybody. Now that was quite a about 12 minute meditation. And I'll let you into a secret because even though I'm a teacher of mindfulness and a proponent of mindfulness, I have never managed to be able to meditate for more than about 12 minutes. That's my limit. So I tend to meditate every day with about a seven minute meditation when I wake, a couple of three, four minute meditations throughout the day if difficult stuff occurs or um, I just fancy a bit of a um, bit of time watching from my observing self. And then I like to finish the evening with some leaves on a stream to let go before I fall asleep at night. And when I do sometimes stop and do an interim mindful practice just in the day and a good example of this would be if I've just because I do still see some people as a mental health professional um, and if I see somebody and they've left me with some of their stuff perhaps something has occurred in my day and um, I'm left with some of their stuff and I, I feel somewhat disconcerted by whatever has occurred and I'm aware that the way I am being is not necessarily the me I want to be or I become aware that the me that I'm being is every bit the me I want to be. I find that and I make mindful decisions by using this process of bold. So let's first of all put bold into a meditative process and then let's just allow a few minutes to explain how we can build it into our day. Let's meditate. So this time we just stop and we bring our attention to our breath. That's the B of the bold. We find our breath. We bring a degree of curiosity to it. And we follow the breath in. And we notice as we breathe out. And we recognize that with every breath that we take as human beings, we are finding an opportunity for a new choice point in every day. The B of the bold is the breath. And if we deliberately on purpose, stop and we breathe for a few moments. It enables us to move into our wise, observing minds. Let's try this together 
and step out and look in at yourself and how you've been this morning. And just look at how you've been this morning, how you've been relating to others, how you've been relating to yourself, how you've been responding to the stuff of your day. Bringing a mindful curiosity. And we move to the L of the bold. And now we lean curiously and mindfully in. And we ask ourselves, do I like that version of me? Is that version of me the mic? that I like? Is that version of me the human being that I want to be? And as we sit and work out if that is the me that I want to be, we've taken a breath, we've moved into our observing self, we've leaned in and now, make a decision, guys. Do you want the rest of your day to be a bit more of this? Or do you want to do something different? Do you want to do something else? Do you want to respond differently for the next stage in the day? that is unfolding and sit with that and notice that through stopping, through moving into your observing self, through mindfully, non-judgmentally leaning in, you're able to use mindfulness to begin to make better decisions and bring yourself closer to the human being that you want to be even amidst the stuff of the day. Let's try and put it together again. We take a breath. We let it go. We reach the choice point of the observing self. Move into your observing self. And just have a look at you and how you are in this moment. And how you've been in the moments that have passed today. And now lean right in. And check out whether... What you see is the you that you want to be for the rest of the day. My hope is that many of you will go, oh, I like this me. I really like this me. Mm. And maybe you lean in and go, oh, that me doesn't work so well. And we find the me I like. And then we make a decision. How am I going to be? It's like an action step. How am I going to be for the rest of the day that is about to unfold before me? And you smile. No judgment, just bold. And when you're ready, just gently come back to the room. So I hope you enjoyed the two meditations. I would just say the bold is my absolute lifesaver. I've even gone to the extent of putting a reminder on my phone and my phone just pings every now and then. And um, just a little reminder, Mike, do a bold. 
And sometimes I do a bold and it takes me a minute and a half. And sometimes I go all kind of um, lovely on myself and I'll do a five, six minute bold and have a real look in at me and the way I'm responding and the way I want to be. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to be better humans. Simply that, just better humans amidst this whirlpool of emotion and thought within this um, turmoil of strikes and flu and pandemic and all of that stuff, an oasis of calm. So I really hope that was useful, that people will be able to use that. And um, thank you for being with me this, this afternoon.